Hello everybody and welcome to the Football Philosophy channel. Um, it won't be for everybody this show. I caused a bit of a stir on Twitter today. Uh, I put a, a, a tweet out this morning uh, where I mentioned the fact that uh, Dortmund are now fifth in the Bundesliga. Uh, I, think, I think I said there were 16 points, I think it was, behind Bayern or 14 or 16 points. And I think about 10 points behind the second place team or 12 points behind Leipzig, something like that. But well behind the first and second place teams and uh, and also behind uh, Eintracht Frankfurt, I think it was, and, and I forget who else it was, but they're behind, you know, the fifth in the table. Um, it was a little bit tongue-in-cheek. So what, what I said was, do we really want to uh, get excited uh, or pin our hopes on, on our club signing two players who are in a team that are fifth in the league? And some of the responses have got a fifth in the Bundesliga. A lot of people say the Bundesliga is a really poor league. So there's two superstars, supposedly, playing for a team who are fifth in a really poor league. So some it was a little bit tongue-in-cheek, but a lot of the answers that I got back, um, you know, a lot of people commenting on what I've said, um, they've not really grasped uh, the point. It's, it's, it's a bit drawn out. It's a bit difficult to explain. I'm going to try and give an explanation of it. It's, it's about my philosophy on football uh, and, and what you need to do. I believe you can make your team better. It's a team game and it's not about um, having individual stars on, or thinking that an ind individual star can make your team necessarily any better. And I'm going to give a few examples as well. Um, so I mentioned the fact that they're, they're, they're fifth in the table in, in the Bundesliga. <clears throat> They've got Haaland up front. Obviously, the players I was talking about were Sancho and Haaland. So I'm going to concentrate on Haaland. He's the, the main topic of conversation at the moment. He's the one that people seem to think is going to be moving in the summer. <clears throat> as soon as a player like that is moving, obviously United are linked to him. Plenty of people say to me, you know, would you have this player? Would you have that player? What player uh, would you would you like to sign? I love talking about players uh, that play for Manchester United. I love watching Manchester United. I also like talking about players that have played for Manchester United because I've seen plenty of them. When you watch the odd game that other teams playing and you just see them a few times, you, you know, it, it would be easy to make a mistake. Um, it's not an easy task uh, deciding which players are going to fit into your team, who are going to gel with your team, who, who are going to not need you to change your style or maybe you might want to change your style to fit that player in. There's so many different things that need to be taken into account and there's no guarantees that if you sign a, a player who's a star player with another club that is going to improve your team. Before you switch off, I'm going to I'm going to explain that as well because obviously you might be thinking, well, you know, he scored he scored 25 goals, I think it is this season, and there's other players around the world who have scored 30 goals, and would, if we sign them, would they improve us? Maybe they would. The point is, you don't really know for certain. Will they fit? Will they gel? Will they, will we make enough chances for them? It's a team game, and I believe that it's more achievable that if you get your team playing better football and not rely on moments of individual brilliance and not rely on brilliant individuals uh, to, to make your team better, I think it's more achievable that you can make your team better by getting the team playing well together uh, without relying on brilliant individuals. All the, pl all the players need to click together and... The team needs to play well, basically, without somebody being relied upon to be the creative spark or the goal-scoring goal spark. Um, when you sign a new player, a player like Haaland, who scores a lot of goals, a lot of people seem to think you scored 25 goals, he'd score 25 goals to us, it'd make a massive difference. It possibly could. The problem is you don't know for certain that it would. Um, I'm going to give a, a few examples. Um, Haaland this season, sorry, last season, he, he signed halfway through last season for Dortmund. Played half a season for them last season. Uh, he scored 13 goals in 15 games, uh, which is fantastic. And this season he has played... Uh, whether it and that he's played 20 games so far this season in the Bundesliga and he's scored 19 goals fantastic figures but it's a team game 
what difference has it made to the team? How are the team doing? That's the way I look at it. And even with the amount of goals, I'll, I'll look at it as well. So Dortmund this season, and I've got other examples of this that I'm going to come to, one or two involving United as well. I've got two more examples I'm going to bring up, or maybe three. But Dortmund, for example, in season 18-19, the, the last full season that Dortmund had before they signed Haaland, 2018-2019, uh, 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 they finished second in the table. Uh, and they, they got 76 points and they scored 81 goals. Then last season, they had Haaland for half a season. So um, so they only had him for half a season, fair enough. But if you're back buying this superstar who did score a lot of goals and maybe he dragged them up, I don't know where they were when they signed him, by the way. But the season before that, they got 76 points and they scored 81 goals. Last season, they had him for half a season. Uh, they finished second again. They got 69 points, so they got seven points less, and they scored 84 goals. So they scored an extra three goals. They had him for half a season. It is an improvement, but it's a negligible improvement. You know, sometimes you score, you know, big teams who are winning a lot of games. Sometimes they score four or five in a game. I'm going to mention that in a bit as well. Uh, so it, it could be that those goals are not worth too many. Well, as you've seen, it's the proof in the pudding. They got seven less points, even though they scored three more goals. So it doesn't necessarily mean that you're going to improve. But they did finish second, just like they finished second the year before they signed him. Now, this is the first full season that they've got Haaland playing for them, 2021. They're fifth in the table at the moment. They've played 25 games. They've lost nine games out of 25, by the way. It's a lot of games. I'm not saying that's his fault. That's all or Sancho's fault. But, you know, you're looking you're looking for these superstars to, to drag your team up. So, so far this season, they've got 42 points and they've scored 52 goals. Uh, I've done a quick calculation. Obviously, this can change. It doesn't always follow suit. But I've done a quick calculation. If they continue to get the points that they're getting so far per game and the goals that they're getting so far per game. And even if that doesn't happen, by the way, this is where they're at at the minute, at the minute where they're averaging goals. So they're looking like they're going to get 57 points and they're going to get 70 goals. The, the last full season that they had without Haaland, they got 76 points, 19 points extra. 19 points extra, and they scored 81 goals, which is 11 extra goals. Now, they've still got to get those points this season, 57 and 70 goals they can get to. They can, they could get to more, of course they could, but that is what they're on target for. So that's where they're at right now, if you understand what I'm saying. You know, that's the percentage that they're on now. They're on a percentage, which means, you know, they're not on target to, to get anywhere near the amount of points or as many goals as they scored the last time they had a full season without Haaland. Um, I don't know what's happened to Borussia Dortmund in between times, but this is not a one-off thing. You know, it, it's not it's not an automatic thing that you're going to improve your position. I mean, at the minute, they're, well, they're definitely not going to finish second. They're 12 points, I think, behind second-place team. So they finished second the last two seasons. So, the, so the, you know, the... The position in the table is definitely going to go worse this season. They might finish third, they might finish fourth, but I think they're four points outside the top four. If I think Borussia Dortmund, if they don't qualify for the Champions League this season, and I know they're still in the Champions League, I doubt that they'll win it, but you never know. Um, but if they don't finish inside the top four and don't get Champions League football, it's a disastrous season for them. It's a disastrous season. Now... I do appreciate that people love to have heroes and they love their heroes. So uh, Haaland's scoring all their goals. I'm sure there's plenty of uh, uh, Dortmund fans regard him as a hero. And I'm sure if he came to Old Trafford, we would regard him as a hero. But my point is, signing a player who's going to add goals to your team and add goals. It's no good replacing the goals that you're already scoring, which seems to be happening in, at Dortmund at the minute. It's no point just replacing the goals and somebody else scoring them, apart from the fact that you've then got a hero, and people do love the heroes, that's fair enough. Um, but the difficult bit is actually signing a player who's going to improve your team, who's going to make sure that your team score more goals 
and gain more points and obviously the eventual target is to win some trophies that would be the target with us difficult in Germany with Dortmund being behind Bayern of course um, but that's the target and that would be the target if he came to us we want more goals we want more points and hopefully we want some trophies we don't just need the goals that we're already scoring being replaced on us still getting the same amount of points and the same amount of goals or a similar amount of points and finishing in a similar place in the table. Um, if if he got, he's, he's got to 19 goals already this season in the league, even if it goes great for him, and even if they do, because they're going to have a real tough job matching the 81 goals that they scored two seasons ago, even if he does that, if, sorry, even if they do that, and even if he is a big help in that, say he gets another 11 goals, say he gets to 30, 32 goals, if he gets to 30, 32 goals, his value is going to absolutely rock it. But even if he gets 32 goals, it's unlikely that the team will end up with more than 81 goals that they scored two seasons ago, the last full season, uh, the last full season that they played before they, they had Haaland. So, so if he does do it, you know, what's the real point in it, apart from the fans having a new hero? Uh, a couple of other examples of similar things. Uh, it, it, switch off now if you're a massive, massive fan. I'm a massive fan of him, by the way, but if you don't want your dreams <coughs> dashing, well, not your dreams, your memories dashing a little bit. If you're a massive, massive fan of Robin Van Persie, you, you, it might be a good idea to switch off now. Uh, Robin Van Persie obviously signed for us. It's in the annals of history now. Um, I wouldn't change it. Uh, what happened that season? Robin Van Persie signed for us. He scored uh, 20, 26 goals in 38 league games. Uh, we won the Premier League. <clears throat> I wouldn't swap it for the world. But what happened that season, for me, it was a freak season. And when I say it was a freak season, I mean it like this. We won the league with 89 points and we scored 86 goals. The previous season to that, we came second in the league on goal difference to City. We also had 89 points and we scored 86 goals. We scored 89... I don't know if I've got that the right way around then. We scored 89 goals when we finished second and then when Robin Van Persie scored, we scored 86 goals. So we scored less goals the season after uh, the season Robin Van, Van Persie signed for us, we scored less goals than we did the year before and we gathered exactly the same amount of points. Now, I've had this discussion with one or two people and I've had, look, I wouldn't swap that season and obviously if we didn't sign him, it might not have happened. It probably wouldn't have happened. It probably wouldn't have happened. But it's a fact that we still scored more goals. The idea is that you're going to get a player who's going to score more goals for you and get you more points. Well, that did not happen. And I'm sure a lot of people would not realise that that didn't happen. You know, we won the league. We won some vital games and he scored some vital goals. But when you just look at the amount of goals scored and the amount of points gathered, we still scored just as many goals and we still scored just as many vital goals. You know, we did, didn't we? Because we got the same amount of points. So it's all right saying he might have scored the winner here, the winner there, the winner in the derby at the Etihad, by the way, a free kick. Um, was, was a massively important goal. Of course it was. But the fact remains, we finished on 89 points, the same as we did the year before. If he wouldn't have scored that winner, of course, probably City, City might not have collapsed and might have won it again that season. So there's all that to be taken into, into account. I do agree that we probably wouldn't have won it if we wouldn't have signed him. But we didn't really go on and improve that much. But we didn't improve over what we did the season before. It just so happened that that particular season, 89 points was enough to win the title, uh, whereas it wasn't the season before. Maybe we dealt with the pressure a little bit late, like, better than City the following season when Robin Van Persie was with us. Um, I don't know. I don't know what the answer to it is. Uh, and like I say, I wouldn't swap it for the world. And I'm not saying that we would have won it. What I am saying, it's there in black and white. The team that we already had was capable of getting 89 points and scoring. They actually scored more goals. So the team was capable of getting that amount of points. It was capable of getting that amount of goals. They did it the very previous season. So... Why it worked for us, it, it, I don't know. I don't know. But it, it did work for us. I wouldn't change it for the world. 
but it doesn't mean that on another season it would have been enough if you follow where I'm coming from. If we were to sign Haaland, for example, next season, and we still get the same amount of points next season and get the same amount of goals next season as we've got this season, it almost certainly won't be enough for us to win the title. We need to get extra goals. What Robin Van Persie did for us was absolutely brilliant, but he didn't bring extra goals. We just replaced the goals that we scored. So, you know, a different person scored the goals than whoever scored 26 of our goals anyway the season before. They were scored by a different player. So, you know, we've got a hero. Uh, like I say, and I'll mention it a few times, uh, people love the heroes. That particular season, I believe it was a bit of a freak season in that it was enough to win the league when it wasn't enough to win the league the season before. And like I say, if we signed Haaland, we would need to get extra goals. We'd need to get 20 extra goals. No good, more than 20 probably. It's no good just replacing the goals uh, that, you're, that you're already scoring. Uh, I'm going to mention Anthony Marshall. Now, I know you're all thinking I'm not going to go past the, do a full show without mentioning Anthony Marshall. A lot of people uh, know that I've said a, a few times before that you know we're scoring quite a lot of goals this season. Anthony Marshall's only got four goals in the league this season, and two of them were in the 9-0 win against Southampton. Last season, he scored 17 goals. Uh, and everybody was saying how great he was playing last season. And as I've mentioned already, and this uh, this is just a link in, into into a different show, really, what I've spoken about before. You know, plenty of people will know who are watching this that I've said before, we're scoring so many goals, you can't expect us to score too many. Of course, we want to, but the team's got to play better. And we've signed a player now, Bruno, who, who's got uh, 17 goals this season so far. Has he got 17? Uh, or oh, 16, I think he's got this season so far. Last season, our top two scorers in the league, uh, Martial and Rashford, got 17 each. Bruno's on 16 this season. Rashi's on nine. Uh, between Martial and Rashford last season, they got 34. Uh, so far this season, Bruno and Rashi have got 25 between them. They're not they're not scoring at the minute, but I imagine they'll get 30, 31. They might do a bit better, but they're not going to be far. Our top two scorers are not going to be far short of 34 goals, just like they would got last season. So it's re, it's just replacing the goals. Getting extra goals is the difficult bit. Um, if we look at our past few seasons, I mean, we had Bruno last season for half a season. The season before last, we scored 65 goals. Last season with Bruno, we scored 66 goals. You know, it's the same. No different whatsoever, one goal. Don't call, me, don't, don't call me a liar for saying 66 is the same as 65 when you're talking about the whole amount of goals in a season. And, and so far this season... Uh, we've scored 56, which is good. We, you know, we're not, we're well on. Well, we're pretty well on our way to beating it. But what I've done is a 56 divided by the 29 games that we've played is 1.93 times 38. If we keep scoring goals at the rate that we're scoring goals, we will get to 73. So it's seven more goals than we scored last season. It really isn't a big deal when you consider we put nine past Southampton and six past Leeds. You've only got to take, I don't know, say we would have beat Leeds 5 and, and we would have beat Southampton 6. You know, we've lost 3 against Southampton. We don't, unless it goes, unless something goes to goal difference at the end. Some of your goals are irrelevant, aren't they? So the fact that we put 9 past Southampton won't know till the end of the season, but it probably won't matter one little bit. So 3 or 4 goals you could take off that. A couple of goals you could take off the Leeds game. You're back down to the 66 goals that we scored last season. I'm pretty sure we didn't score a 6 last season, let alone a 9. So just scoring more goals as well doesn't guarantee you extra points. It's about the spread of the goals. Obviously, nobody's in control of that. You can't you can't say, oh, we're going to score an extra eight goals next season and they're all going to be goals that are going to nick us a point or even or even change draws into wins. And it's probably more likely that it'll just be extra goals. Most of your extra goals would be in goals in games where you are winning comfortably. Um, the spread of the goals, what was I going to say about that? Uh, yeah, that, that six or seven extra that we've scored could all be 
in those two games. Like I say, you're not in control of that. So the six horse, if and that's if we get them, we might not get them. So it's, even though we've got another player now who's going to score, Bruno's probably going to end up with 20, 21, 22 perhaps. You know, he's, he's probably going to get 20 at least, I'd say. He's on 16 now. All he's done is replace the goals that Anthony Marshall scored. And it's about, it's about how the team plays. If your team is only going to score a certain amount of goals, you need your team to play differently to be able to score more goals. It's no good just saying we've got a player now who's going to score this. It, it, it could work. Of course, I'm not saying it won't work. I'm not saying it won't work. And me, like anybody else, if you said to me now, do you want Alfie, uh, uh, Alfie Harland? If you want uh, Harland, uh, sign, if you want Harland to sign for United this summer, I bite your hand off. Of course I do. Of course I do. All I'm saying is I wouldn't be as excited about it, or or, or just assuming like so many others that that's the last piece in the jigsaw. He might score thirty goals, but just like. Robin Van Persie, when he signed for us, I know that worked and we won the title, but we didn't score any more goals. And just like Bruno now scoring a lot of goals, they're both scoring goals that are just replacing goals that we've been scoring anyway. Getting your team to play better and getting a player who's going to score extra goals is the difference. Just just having a different scorer uh, is no good whatsoever, apart from the fact that you will have a new hero. If we sign Haaland next summer, my money would be on it that we wouldn't score any more than five, six, seven or eight more goals and maybe gain an extra couple of points if we're lucky. Still finish second or third, but everybody uh, would have would have a new hero. So it's about getting your, 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 your team to gel, getting your new player to gel with that team and, and obviously, if necessary, changing your style of your play if you've got a certain player that you're trying to play up to. Um, so it's it's not automatic. That's what that's my point. All I'm trying to point out with that tweet is it isn't going great at Dortmund. It's not actually going as well as it was two seasons ago when they when he wasn't playing for Dortmund. And that's easily possible that that could happen if he signs for another club. It's easily possible. Um, I wanted to mention uh, Chelsea. The amount of money that they spent. Um, the amount of money Chelsea spent on attacking players. I've lost count how much they spent. They bought three attacking, didn't they? Ziyech, I can't even remember them all. Timo Werner. Chelsea spent a fortune on attacking players last summer and it hasn't helped them. It hasn't helped them one little bit. The, the, the fourth in the table, they rarely finish outside the top four. They won it last about, I don't know, three or four years ago. Getting your team to improve, signing players that improve your team is a difficult job. That's why I don't get as excited um, as you might see. You know, when I'm on the United stand, we speak about transfers a lot. Uh, you know, would you like this player? Would you like that player? I'm always a little bit cagey about which player I'd like. You need to watch players a lot more. You need to understand the dynamic of that player, of how that player would link with the players that you've got. Would your players supply him with the right sort of su supply that he needs? There's so much to take into account, uh, and the same the same applies, by the way, in other in other positions as well. It's not just about goal scorers, uh, but would I take Haaland if offered him? If we could get Haaland, you damn right I would. I'd love to give it a try. I just won't get as excited as everybody else. Uh, and if we did get him, and he does score thirty goals. And we still finish second or third. At least you've got a new hero. Yeah.